At the moment our network is insecure. We've enabled IP connectivity between all HP networking devices and the PCs in this topology. So as an example, I could telnet to the HP router. In other words, our 5406 switch. And notice I'm able to go to manager mode with no authentication. I could do whatever I want to on the switch. I could do whatever I want to on the switch. Look at the configuration, change the configuration and so forth. That means users, if they know the IP address of your networking devices, could just telnet to those devices and make changes. That's obviously something you don't want. So in global configuration mode, you can type the command password and notice we can set the password of the operator or the manager or both. So let's change the operator password. So password operator and firstly we're going to specify a username. So let's create an operator username of operator. Set the password for instance to HP. Not secure but that's fine for this lab. I notice we are told that DHCP based image file download from a TFTP server is disabled when an operator or manager password is set. Order run is also disabled. So that's fine. So now when we telnet back, notice we asked to enter a username. So I could say operator, put in the password, and notice we are taken to operator mode. Notice it's different to what happened previously where we were taken directly to manager mode. And now we could type enable and notice we can go to manager mode. So that means a person with operator credentials could still make changes to the switch or router and we might not want that. So, so what we're going to do now is create a manager password. So password manager, username, let's say manager. Put in the password and notice that's now configured. So I'll log out. Telnet back to the switch. Let's choose the manager username. So manager, password and notice we immediately in manager mode. I'll log out. Log Telnet back again and let's specify operator. So notice we've taken to operator mode or operator level. To go to manager level we have to type enable and notice we are now forced to put in the correct username and password to go to manager level. So we have successfully configured username and password authentication on our router. We would need to do that for all devices in our topology, but I'm not going to bore you showing you that on all the devices. The commands are exactly the same. It's best practice to set the operator and manager passwords on your devices. Otherwise, remember, anyone could telnet to that device and is automatically taken to manager level or manager mode, and they can configure anything they like on your switch. Now HP switches can be managed through a web browser. So as an example, I could browse to the 5406 switch acting as our router. I could then log in and notice now I can manage the switch. You can see it's a 5406, you can see its IP address various other information you can see for instance which ports are active traffic that's sent and received and so forth so you could manage this entire system so for instance the VLANs through the web browser so as you can see here different VLANs have been created with the relevant IP addresses and there's other information available here as well the problem with this is that HTTP is clear text and there's a lot of really good hacking tools out there that will allow you to capture usernames and passwords and other information if it's not encrypted. So rather than using 
HTTP, we should enable HTTPS. So in other words, secure HTTP, which gives us encryption and authentication and other security advantages. So telnetting to our 5406, we can log in as the manager and then in global config mode type crypto key generate and we're going to generate a certificate using RSA but the size of our key is going to be 1024 now this creates a public and private key please refer to the VPN security section where I talk more about encryption and keys and so forth we're now going to create a self-signed certificate. So crypto host cert generate self-signed. So we are creating a self-signed certificate for the server. As you can see here, we can specify the validity start date. I'm going to set it as 01, 01, 2012. End date for this lab, that should be more than enough. So 01, 01, 213. Common name, so you could specify a name here. I'm just going to leave it as the IP address. Organizational unit, we could say training as an example. Organization, we could say configure terminal.com or whatever the organization is. City, we could say London, England, UK. And the certificate is then generated by the switch. We could then enable web management through SSL. And then we could say no web management to remove HTTP web management. So as you can see, it's not working. Let's try that again. So HTTP IP address of the switch. Not working. But let's use HTTPS. Now Internet Explorer is warning us that the certificate presented by this website is not issued by a trusted certificate of authority. Once again, please refer to the VPN video where I explain certificates. Essentially, our machine doesn't trust the certificate issued by the switch because the switch has signed its own certificate. What are we going to do? Continue or not? Now, in this case, I'm going to continue because I trust this website because it's the switch that we have just configured. Notice Internet Explorer is warning us that the certificate is not trusted, hence the red background. We're going to log in as manager, put our password in. I'm not going to remember passwords because that's very bad practice. So we've successfully logged in. You can see the switch information once again. IP address and other information as we saw previously when we weren't using HTTPS. Going to security, SSL, you can see that SSL is enabled, port is 443, we are requiring the use of SSL because we turned off web management. We are forcing the use of an encrypted link using HTTPS or SSL. You can see the key size is 1024. It's a self-signed certificate. We didn't get a certificate from a CA. You could use this link to do that. But we created a self-signed certificate. You can see information here about the self-signed certificate. So once again, you could manage the switch just by going through the menu options and choosing the relevant part of the configuration that you want to manage. Now Telnet, once again, is insecure. And hacking tools can be used to capture usernames and passwords. And there's some really good hacking tools that will actually capture your entire Telnet session. So if you type show run, your entire running configuration will be captured by the hacking tool. So we can use PuTTY to Telnet to our 5406. So once again, and notice we'll be able to then log in with our username and password. But let me create a new session. Close the old one. And notice we have the option to use SSH. 
So we could use SSH to manage the switch, which is more secure because the traffic is encrypted. So SSH, if you like, is the encrypted form of Telnet. Notice they are separate protocols, but logically accomplish the same thing. SSL or HTTPS is the encrypted version of HTTP. So to enable SSH on a switch, the first thing you need to do is gain access to the switch either through the console or through Telnet as I'm doing here. Go into global configuration mode and then type the command crypto key generate SSH. We're going to use RSA keys and we're going to specify the bits as 1024. The greater the number, the more secure, but the more work required to do the encryption. And then we're going to enable SSH. So from our PuTTY client, we are going to make a connection to the switch, but in this case, we're using SSH, which uses port 22. Click open. We get a security warning or alert saying the server's host key is not cached in the registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. Now this all depends how paranoid you are. If you've watched the matrix 10 times, then you're probably going to be more paranoid than most. So you need to decide whether you're going to make this connection initially to the machine when you're sitting right next to it, or if you trust the network that you're running across. Now I trust my local network, so I'm going to click yes to trust the key. And notice now I'm asked to log in. So I'm going to log in as manager. The password is going to be the password we configured. And notice we are able to gain access to the device. So let me just show you that again. I'm going to create a new session. I'll close the old one down. Connect to 10.0.0.100 using SSH. In other words, port 22. Notice what happens now. We immediately ask to log in. We are not prompted again for the key because we accepted the key previously. Notice we're connecting to our 5406 and we are able to log in. It's recommended in the real world that you use SSH. It's much more secure than Telnet because the entire session is encrypted. Whereas with Telnet, your traffic is in clear text and can easily be compromised by using hacking tools that are freely available on the internet. Now you can lock down your network even more by limiting management access to specific VLANs. Now we're going to use VLAN 1 as our management VLAN. As discussed previously, you might want to use another VLAN and best practice would say you should for management purposes. It's recommended that you don't use VLAN 1 for management, even though a lot of people do in the real world. So as an example, let's assume that a user has access to this PC on VLAN 2. So on VLAN 2, here's my PC. So IP config shows me that this PC is in the subnet on VLAN 2. Notice 10.0.2.2.5.2. The user could simply telnet to the switch and then if they know the username and password or guess what the username and password are, they can gain access to the network. By the same token, in this example, notice we didn't configure a username and password on edge 3 so the user can just gain access to the switch by just telnetting to the device. So let's change that behavior by not allowing access to the switch except from a management VLAN. So on our local PC that I'm recording on, this PC is connected to the Cisco router, which is connected to VLAN 1 on the HP router. So I'll Telnet to the HP 5406 switch, log in. And now let's change the authorized managers. So say IP authorized managers. 
and specify 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0. In other words, only allow the subnet on VLAN 1 access to the switch. <laughs>